custom fitting. Is it a complete con and are you being completely let down? Is what we're going to talk about today. And the main question in today's video I want answering is, do you deserve just a whole lot more? Like golf clubs aren't cheap, are they? So what I've done is I've sent a secret shopper into a fitting area and they've got fit and they talk to us a little bit about the process of their fit and then they show the numbers as well. They, they captured as much data as they could from the fit, which was an issue as well. And then we retested them back here at the Foresight Studio here at Honiton. Let's see what come out. You're gonna see basically my secret shopper come into the studio and we're gonna go through a process, uh, kind of a little bit repeating the process he went through and then a more like a bigger process to find out what really was in the numbers and what was the standard of this fit. And at the end of the day, the big question, do you deserve a lot more? Where I stand at the minute, I think you deserve ridiculously loads more. Right, we're here with Fergus. Hello, Fergus. Hello. Um, and we're testing his test. Oh, that's a good start. <laughs> oh, low skimmer. <laughs> so we're starting with Fergus's driver. This is the driver he plays. It's an Epic Flash Sub-Zero. Um, and we're gonna hit three with his, and then we got three with the club that he tried at his fitting as well. And we're just gonna keep moving them around and show you some data. This is the problem that you're gonna have, like that one. Like the first, what you went to two four. That was a four four. But he would keep this in. Yeah, because it's my driver. Because look, this is like if you hit five with that. Yeah. Which is what you said you did when you yeah, warmed yeah. up. I only need three more. This ain't gonna get very good numbers. No, because I've got a four four spin. Yeah. So just showing there, <laughs> Fergus just hit two with his. He's actually warm because we've hit a good batch before this, just to make sure he's warm. But he, when he did his thing, you hit five shots of your drive. Five of mine, yeah. Those two are perfect for me now. If I'm the fitter and I want to make a sale, like I'm winning, because no matter how good the next three are, yeah. an average is going to probably get past that. Certainly if we then go and hit 30 with that. Yeah. Which is kind of what you did. You hit five and then knew how many would be. Probably about with. 35 across a, three or four different ones, but yeah. yeah. So they you know I mean? building up to the perfect data set. So let's just take a look at the numbers Fergus was able to get. Now he wasn't, they weren't able to send him the numbers, which was odd. So he had to take pictures, which is unfortunately. And they also deleted his first group of shots. They just got rid of them. But he remembers he hit about five shots with his club and it was spinning at around three, five. So that's what they highlighted that they need to, to beat. Like that club was spinning too much. You'll hear us talk about it in the fit. Basically they, they're not measuring strike or anything. No club data, just ball data, which to me is like, Wowzers. Um, and you can see he ended up at around 2.6 and an average carrier 2.51s with some 2.68 carries in there was I think was his longest. That's where they ended up. And they did that in the fitters speech, however you want to see that. They did that with shaft. It was the shaft which we've got and we're going to test with his club and the fitters one that he fitted. No club data, no strike measurements but it was shaft. Watch this. So you've ripped that one. Yeah, absolutely ripped it. Uh, so that one's spinning at 3.5, so still quite high. Look, you're only carrying that 2.65. I may have ripped it. I feel like I've ripped if it. If I have a 1.62 ball speed, I'm carrying it 2.80. Yeah. Because that number's down. Uh, and the strike, we didn't rip it actually, the strike was low. Really? It felt yeah. really good. If you'd got that higher, that would have been a low spinner. Yeah, yeah. Because you're squaring the face up to the par. Yeah. And another good one, bit low but decent. Yeah. So the reason I've not made, I'm going to make Fergus hit one more actually, is just from those first two shots, just to try and show this point. I, I actually, because of the first two shots that come out, I want him to hit five, similar to what he did, and then we'll go into swapping every three. See what I mean, Fergus? I want you to hit five like you did, yeah, and yeah. then we'll compare those to the new shafts and ideas. That was bottomy. Cool. Look at that, bit. Look at that spread of shots on the right. It's a lovely spread indeed. <laughs> So let's grab the other club there. So we've got the Rogue Max. 
And then if we just, did he show you your numbers after five or not? No, not okay. really. But um, he could see, if I look at your numbers now, you've got 160 ball speed, which we know you're going to get close to. Yeah. You'll get quick. I know you're going to beat that. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, because if you look at the first, like, because I've almost missed the first one. Well, I know you got a 166 in there, so I, I know one, you can beat that. And I got a 153. And you got a 152 in there, yeah, 152.9. And your three four spin, and I can see you've got a two nine. You had a miss it at two four, so I'm thinking I've won. And you got a two eighty one carry, and you're averaging two four six. Like I can easily beat these yeah, numbers. Yeah, like two, like two four six is like I would be. There's no, I've got no interest in you needing to hit anymore. That is my perfect setup. If like, if this is a card trick, I have literally for, <laughs> I forced the card already. Yeah, the card is forced. I'm I can do whatever trickery I need now because I have. The card that you've chosen at random, I made you pick it. Yeah. And we're going for, this one is a 60 gram stiff, is what uh, Fergus has got in his, um, if I can just get that to focus, there we go. 60 gram stiff is what Fergus has in his club. And now this in the Rogue ST Max, so he's going sub-zero to a max because I presume why would why did he go sub zero to max? Is it because it's more friendly? No, um, for, for gaming, you know, because it's got I higher said, MOI. Because sub zero is a low spinner. Well, I don't know why he, uh, that that was one thing that surprised me a little yeah, bit. Okay. Is that he was worried about the spin, but then went to a higher spinning then went to a head. higher spinning head, which but, I found a bit strange. Yeah, but maybe it's because you were hitting across the face. In all fairness, so yeah. he's thinking give you more MOI. Um, so we're now a seventy five gram or a seventy gram a seventy five gram X flex. This is the club you ended up on, yeah. isn't it? So well, I've changed the club. We're now going to go three, and then three, and then three, and then three. Yeah, that's, a... that's an equivalent to your first. It's almost the same stream. Yeah. Good. OK, let's go back to your driver. So out of the two heads, and then in turn, we got the head set up the same way, the two shafts, which feels more like Fergus is definitely, you know, he, he's going to lose some off to the right, which is, I would say, is a fair worry, isn't it? Yeah. Um, out of the two, which one feels like it'll go less cutty? Uh, this one, mine. Yeah. Much more. So the yeah. 60 gram stiff compared to the 75 X feels less Cutting, yeah, which is a common e feeling people would have. Easier Stiff, to control. Heavy, face more open, flexier and lighter. Feels like the face might close. Yeah, just, people would, that's something people would say. The thing for me about that one is it just feels very heavy. Okay. As he starts pulling them left. But I mean, that's your game. Your driver's long, but can go both directions, yeah. can't it? It can. So what we're going to do, we're going to go round and round and round and get a good data set. Um, as Fergus just keeps hitting and we'll just keep mixing them up and we'll show you the data. So this is our bigger data set. Yeah. Because what I've done is I've drawn a line under some different sets. So basically I've gone a big, big data set where he's just changed every three clubs. So then I did another little test secondary where he hit more of what you watched there, those bits he hits five of his and then we did a kind of switch into the clubs. So let's show you why. So on the bigger data set, like this is a healthy data set that I think someone could collect possibly in a fit, but it might have to be longer than most people's fits are already. This is the extra stiff 75 gram in the max, 160 ball speed. So you have a bit more ball speed out of your flash, your yeah. driver, which I would equate to nothing more than probably a difference in strike location. They're your average strikes, and that is definitely a little bit more centered, a little higher, which would create a little bit more ball speed. Yeah. So how much of that is the shaft and how much of that is you? Well, we'll go on and, sh and see. Um, you can see the loft didn't really differ. The head speed was within a mile an hour of each other. So you did swing your one one mile an hour faster, which adds ball speed. Again, if we just keep testing, they're just going to regress to be exactly the same. Yeah. Distance, yours was three yards further on carry, but standard deviation of eight and 12. So they're totally overlapping that you can see from the two circles. Total distance was the same. 
the extra stiff spun 200 revs less, so you could argue it's less spin, but look at the standard deviations, there's no less spin in there. No, they're 10% and 20% of your value. Exactly, they're, they're pretty much the same. You could possibly argue that you are a little straighter with the extra stiff, even though you feel straight, you feel straighter with the flash, don't you, with the lighter? Yeah, I found stiff. it easier to get it to the target. Okay. So if you look at the two circles, you would argue that the yellow one is tighter than the blue one. But if we look at the actual data, so you averaged with yours 3.2 yards left of target, yep. where you averaged 20 yards right of target with the stiff. Yeah, with the- Extra stiff. Yeah, the extra stiff driver, okay. yeah. Which is what you were feeling. Yeah, I found that it was easier it to- drift more to, to the right yeah. is what you felt. Um, but your standard deviation from your three left was 20 yards with yeah. your shaft. Yeah. So basically you could be, what we were saying, 23 yards left or 17 yards right. Yeah, and you think about most fairways, that's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah, hitting the fairway most times. Now the extra stiff that well, you could argue from the circles here is slightly tighter, you are averaging 20 yards right, average, Yeah. standard deviation of 13. Yeah. So you're now 23 yards, uh, you're 33 yards right. Yeah. Or what's that left? Your seven, seven right, still. right still. Yeah, so I'm still all. So yeah, I'm, thirty something yards right would worry me a little. Yeah, and me. Yeah. So I mean, you could argue as well. You could change your um, centre point here to straighten that out. Yeah, yeah. You, you could just... aim further left and move that all left, and you could argue it was slightly tighter left and right, even though you feel you're tighter. Yeah, with the other one, it felt like the, yeah, the my one was easier with to hit the target. Both with. of the clubs, the spin is up there and nowhere near what you got in your fitting, which does yeah, I got four thousand something with mine. Yeah, but as in, but even the one which got you know the, the improved wasn't anywhere near this. No, it? it was in the twos. It was in the twos. Yeah, um, I can get this in the twos. I'm just going to have to use the delete button. Yeah. <laughs> now we collected another data set, and look, now I can sell you your club on this data set. Yeah. Because I'm seeing a tighter standard DV, uh, a tighter left and right dispersion with the yellow, which is the sh low spin shaft. I'm now seeing the spin that he saw compared to what you got on yours. And I'm seeing extra distance and lower ball speed. So the extra distance potential on the new improved club is massive. I would sell you this club all day long. It would not be hard. No. The numbers are just better. But the reason the numbers are better on this data set is because it's just a tiny data set. Yeah. It's really small. And I got really lucky in his first five shots that you saw, you had some real, we've deleted one of the outliers <laughs> because the customer rank. said, well, if I had one really low one in there. So I deleted it off, I took it off. Yet still, I've sold him the new club. But I've only sold you the new club because the data set was small enough for me to be able to pretend there's a difference. When you look at the bigger data set, you could see the difference just basically regress to settle at the same. If we look at the bigger data set and I just cherry pick, you know, six or from each uh, batch, I can easily show you that one club and a shaft is performing differently. Now, here's another really interesting thing, which we're just gonna try with Fergus. This might fail, it might work, it might okay. not. Your spin is high. Yeah. Like he's always in the 3000s and the idea of his original fit is he wanted to get the spin down so they went for the shafts and they managed to get that small data set number changing shafts and the spin came right down really by the new club um i'm just going to try something else and what i want you to do is set up to that ball or just set up to an imaginary ball and you need the ball further back yeah you need your hands further forward and you need your shoulders not open, not your hips. Try and keep your hips where they are. No, so you're gonna no. get that right shoulder back like that. That feels very strange. Try and straighten up your legs a bit, but not your shoulders. That's it. So this way, Fergus, watch me. You need your shoulders. Like no, that. that one needs to go back. Just relax this off. I'm very. Okay, and then from there, we're swinging out to right field. Yeah. That feels very strange. Yeah, go on again. So don't get the ball so far forwards, right shoulder drops back, swinging out to right field. Cool. Next thing you could do as well as you swing back is you could try and get this lead wrist a little flatter. Right. So up to the top and stop. Are you there? So see all this angle? Yeah. 
Let's get it out. Right. Swinging out to right field. That way more. So you could rather than think of lead wrist, you could feel face, face and feel like it's moving this way more. It's almost like trying to close it, would point you call the face that? the ground. Yeah, where you're more... Like that. That way. Stay there, that's it. But we're gonna to swing to right field, remember? Yeah. So it would help you to swing to right field if you tried to swing to right field. Yeah. Is that what they call it in cricket? I don't know what they call it in cricket. Yeah, basically out there. Out there, yeah. To the offside, yeah. Yeah, offside. There you go. It's good. So if you flatten your wrist, that will come back. Right. If you don't flatten your wrist, it'll stay there. There you go. There's the beginning of a slightly different era of hitting balls. Like you're doing that. That yeah. isn't the shaft. That's that me. isn't That's... luck. You made that ball I've... start to the right yeah, cha... and curve back. Change that delivery. That's called a skill. So you're on a. If you look at the strike of this one, it's really interesting. So it's low on the face, yeah. which is a high spinning strike. Uh, you're a little bit more down. You were more up at this. Face is now closed to a path, now hitting free into out. You were out to in before. Yeah. And we're going highest. So that's really, that's almost the highest tolerance of spin, that last one. So that's the highest it could be with that delivery. Well, it'll go to three, two, but you're right at the top side of your spin. Right. Where normally that's the low side of your spin. Yeah, that would be like average. And for anyone watching, this is four shots. Yeah, this, is, it, this, is, this is in the space of six minutes. Yeah, we've not done it. Not, it's not spent long on this. This isn't exactly trained in. Six minutes this has taken. That's gonna. That would have drawn, but you healed it. Did you feel the yeah, strike? Yeah, healy. So you can see the strike on that one. That. Oh yeah. So yeah. that's that's a real high spin strike. Yeah. Okay. That last ball. Spun at 3-1. So before? 3-1 before was your playing. So that, that would have been four. Oh, that would have been four and a half. Oh, yeah. So if you just get this feeling in a pace so you can strike it, your spin will live at 2-5. And it'll be going bombers. And that's from 3-5, I'm up to 4,000. That's not a shaft change. That is 10 shots and a little bit of knowledge of how to deliver club. And that is always my biggest problem. It's built on a shaft outward basis. You're doing X. Oh, I'm going to find some of these. And I think, well, I mean, the person who fit you wasn't even measuring face. No, not at all. Just ball speed. So the ingredients of spin is going to be spin loft, three dimensional. So you need to know angle of attack, dynamic loft, face the path, path. Speed, well he had ball speed, he didn't have club head speed, but obviously you can work that out pretty close. And then strike, he didn't have strike and he didn't mark the face at all, did he? No. So he hasn't, isn't measuring the ingredients of strike and then going to one of these to change strike, which is something that they've not measured. Yeah. It's the wrong way round. Well, yeah, the idea that you can make inferences about how I'm delivering the club without looking at how I'm delivering the club. You're spinning at 4,000. I need to know why are you spinning it at 4,000? Then I can start to fix you. Yeah. And if that happens to be a change of shaft, I, as, a, as a golf pro, I do that all day long. If I can just change the shaft and you're a better player, well, that's an easy day work for me. I've not done anything. Yeah, that's easy for me. But the, over times and years of coaching, you realize that's not the way the world works. Unfortunately, it's the way you are sold that it works. Yeah. Oh dear. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, that's a rocket. That's a bomber. So now look at that's the potential. Flown a, that's flown 282. Yeah, that's, this is my point with the potential. That's with your shaft, your club. So we've gone, here we go, look. You've hit one out in the middle. Finally. Eighth shot, tenth shot. Like this is beyond infancy. You're now spinning at 2,000. 
And if you spin at 2000 with a ball speed of 164, it should be carrying 282. So you are now in my, look, club head speed 113, 282. These are my numbers at the top side. And I don't feel like I'm trying to smash that. You were just hitting that normal. We, I mean, I played with Fergus and what happened is he's a big guy. I mean, look at the size of him compared to me. It's comedy. <laughs> um, and I can see he's working hard, but I felt like I can out, and there's time, I outdrove you on a hole when I was up with you. Yeah. And I love playing with golfers like that because I just think they are working so hard to get so little out. Yeah. Yet someone wants to sell you a shaft in a club or a new club. Like, it's, it like just I, scares me. Because I'm just looking at, well, as soon as we played, I'm just looking at you thinking, oh, like, if I was at your club and we were in drawn in competitions and stuff, I'm just giggling because you are pedaling so hard to try and keep up with me swinging yeah. that top side and still it in at that I distance. When I don't, I don't play with many golfers who hit the ball anywhere near as far as me. In your rounds, you're really, really long. Yeah. I just see you leaking power like a, yeah. like a sieve. Like... I'm not making They're the most of the They're seeing the opposite. Yeah, I'm not making the most of the attributes I have. I 100%. Right. You're running at 70%, yet they're trying to sell you a 400 pound plus club. Yeah. Seems a bit unfair to me, that. But maybe it's not in the business model, and that's actually the bigger point. So interesting. Hopefully that, that's highlighting you of what can happen out there. Now, let, let's just establish, I think there's there's two levels of fits, you could argue. So you could say that there's fits where people just want to go and get a new driver. They don't even want to hit what they've got. They, you know, I've had people come years ago who just want a new driver, and that's cool. That's not a problem. And this kind of, let's call it, selling process, because that isn't a custom fit as such, in my opinion, um, is fine. You know, just go and buy a new driver. Try a few, here's some numbers. They don't mean much, but which one did you like? But if we're talking what's better and what's worse, and a test, and obviously what's better and worse can be defined in many different ways. It doesn't always have to be distance. It could be, I like the look and sound of it better. I like the fact that it's shorter or longer length. It might feel like I can hit it straight. It might draw, it might fade more. So defining what's better also needs to be put up there. But if you're gonna go for a test to see whatever your definition of better is, that isn't it. That, that to me is happening a lot. And it's just not really good enough. I think you deserve so much more. You know, these clubs are expensive. And at the end of the day, the manufacturers need to, I think, be a little bit more geared around the consumer and less around just what kind of accounts are selling the most equipment and let them run riot. Because uh, like, they need to take responsibility for maybe educating you, the consumer, on the level of fits that they might get at different centers. Think about this, the manufacturers don't just sell their product into any shop. You've got to reach certain criteria because they want to protect their brand. It can only be traded online in certain ways. It can only be traded in shop in certain ways. You need to buy a certain amount in. Your store needs to be in a certain location. There are rules of who stocks this stuff because the brand is protecting itself, which I think is fair. Yet the custom fit idea is like, well, it just it's just, it's the wild west, isn't it? I just think you deserve so much better, like so much better. Ah, oh, ripped it. <laughs> Literally arrowed it. Let me know what you think. And look, there's plenty of really good fitters out there, and I think a good fit should be more of an educational process. I've said this for years. It should be really, for me, part of more with a lesson so you understand delivery. Remember, that person wasn't even measuring delivery, yet they were changing a shaft. Now, how were they quantifying any of those changes apart from they changed the way they wanted it to go so the sale could be made? Honestly, guys and girls, I think you deserve so much better. I think the manufacturers need to step up a little bit. All this tech. I mean, the driver that he ended up going for or was said he needed, didn't go for it, uses artificial intelligence on the face for speed, spin and launch. They weren't measuring where he was striking it on the face. They're not even testing the tech that a company like Callaway are putting a lot of money and effort into advertising and developing. I think Callaway, I think TaylorMade, I think Shrixon, Cleveland, Titleist, Pink, they deserve better as well. Let me know what you think. It's interesting. Like, this needs to change.